Hello, welcome to my kitchen garden. Today I'm going to tell you how I grow courgettes or zucchini. I'm going to run through how I sow and grow them, some practical tips for planting them out to make watering easier through the summer and also highlight some of the varieties that I grow here in my garden and some of the best varieties to grow especially the disease resistant ones which won't go down with mildew and diseases during the summer. So stick with me and I'll run through a full growing guide for courgettes. I grow my courgettes from seed, starting them off in pots in my unheated greenhouse but keeping those pots in a heated propagator to ensure good seed germination. And I always grow several different varieties of courgette. You never know what the weather's going to be like during the summer. So I think by growing two or three different varieties of courgette, you're hedging your bets to make sure hopefully one of them gives you bumper crops during the summer. And this is how I sow them. I start my courgettes off by sowing them in small pots. Courgettes are a crop that you really need to sow early in the year so that you can get the plants to a decent size in the warmth and protection of a greenhouse before you plant them outside when conditions warm up in summer, which in my part of the UK is around about the end of May or beginning of June. So in around about end of March into April, I will sow in pots. I use a specific seed sowing compost. Just put some into a three inch pot or so. And then courgette seeds are quite large, as you can see, so you can easily handle them individually. Rather than sowing the seeds flat, you always sow them on edge, push them down into the compost, and this stops water settling on top of the seed and causing it to rot. So just push it down to a couple of centimetres or so deep, cover it with a little bit of compost, that's all there is to it. If you've got a variety of courgette, like this one has got several in a packet, it's actually got 10 seeds in this packet, you might think actually I'm going to guarantee getting a good seed germination rate by putting more than one seed in a pot. So I could put a second seed in there as well. And then once the seeds have germinated, I can thin out to one seedling. That just saves me waiting a month finding that none of the seeds have germinated and then having to sow some more. Once the seeds have been sown, just water the compost well. I usually start by watering from above and then I'll stand the pots in a little tray of water and water from below. And that way the pot will just soak up some of the moisture. So again, just a little bit of water from above. You can just let that soak down and drain down through the compost. But if you leave the pot in the water, just until you're sure that the compost is really moist, that way you know you've got enough moisture there to start the seeds germinating. Then all you need to do is to label the pot, put a label in with the name of the variety, and then I get piece of this clear kitchen film. Little hole here to go over where the label is. And I put this on basically to conserve moisture at the surface of the pot. I don't want the compost drying out. So that will just make sure it doesn't. As soon as the little seedlings are germinated, I can take this off and leave them. And once that is nice and wet, I can just take this pot and I'll put this in my heated propagator, set to a temperature about 21 degrees and that will ensure good germination during those late spring months of the year. So keep those pots of seeds in your heated propagator, take the clear film away once the seeds are germinated. If two seeds germinate, thin down to one and grow them on in the warmth and protection of either a heated propagator or your greenhouse until conditions have warmed up outside. In my area, by about the end of May or beginning of June, the weather conditions are warm enough to be able to plant your courgettes outside without risk of them being hurt by the cold. So grow them on, pot them up into a slightly larger pot if necessary, and get ready for planting out. And that's next. 
I hope you enjoy this video and if you do please give it a thumbs up and I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel at Adams Gardening Guides. I've got lots more videos on my channel so if you like this one do check those out too. So my courgettes have been grown singly in five inch pots. If I tip this one out you'll notice it's already developing a decent root system so this is ready for planting and I need to plant it slightly deeper in order to create this planting moat around it. So dig out your planting hole and mound the soil up around it and then after a while you can just check the depth. I need to go a little bit deeper still than that. I want to go deeper than the compost level would normally be if it was level with the surrounding soil. I need to go down a little bit deeper. Let's check here. Tiny bit deeper still. Take out a little bit more soil. Put that around. That's probably about right. Tip the plant out. Drop it down into the hole. Now if I just back some soil around that root ball and firm it down with your fingers. Don't need to push too hard because that soil will settle down when you're watering the plant. And you'll notice now how if I just mound this soil up around it, the plant itself is like in a little indented area with the soil mounded around. Then when it comes to watering, you can water into this little moat. So the water is directed towards the root ball of the plant. You can do the same with other things. You can do the same with tomatoes and other crops. But notice here now how I can water in. All of that water is going to be directed towards the root ball of the courgette, helping to settle the soil around it, rather than the water flooding out onto the surrounding bed. So when I come to water my courgettes, and I'll probably be watering these two or three times a week, during the really hot weather, you know that the water has been directed towards that root ball and this water sinks down into the soil to make sure that there's a good supply of moisture for the courgette. If as an alternative I would just be watering over the whole bed, you'll just be encouraging weeds to grow on all of this soil. So by directing the water down into these individual moats, you just give the plants some water and that does help to cut down on weeding too. So there you have it. A little tip for today. Plant your crops in a little moat. I think I've actually seen this when I've been abroad to countries like Italy and you've seen them try to grow crops in really hot conditions and this makes the very most of the water you've got. Of course if you've got a water butt you can be watering from that instead and saving on your tap water. Well, once the courgettes are nicely established, the flowering and cropping gets into full swing like on this Primula variety here. And I've got one courgette ready to harvest. Cut that one off now. Decent sized one. I'm going to use that in my cooking tonight. I've got a male flower here and uh, more female flowers, more little courgettes developing. So this variety is getting into good cropping mode. I should have lots to pick over the next few weeks. The courgettes have been flowering and fruiting for months now and this has been one of my star performers this year. This is a variety of courgette called Primula, like the flower. But it has produced loads of flowers, more crops coming on here, a couple of courgettes just ripening up at the base right in there and as you can see you can tell by the little mini courgette at the base of the flower, the female flower forming more courgettes. So these will go on cropping well into autumn. One of the reasons I love this variety Primula is that it's got good natural resistance to disease, particularly a disease called powdery mildew that can attack the leaves. These leaves are healthy, they've just got the little 
silver marbling markings on them but quite healthy still any old leaves I cut away the plant itself is reasonably compact but it will go on flowering and fruiting well into autumn so really lovely pickings from courgette primula so remember to keep up with the watering as well these crops will have quite high demand for moisture during the hot dry weather they're a very fleshy plant and developing fruits requires quite a bit of moisture so as we saw before I've planted these courgettes in a little hollow so if I water around the main stem of the courgette plant into that little moat the water just soaks down nicely into the root zone so this is something I'll do probably every day if the weather's really hot and dry otherwise at least every two to three days give them a really good generous water so that water really sinks down deeply into the rooting zone below so do check your plants regularly to see how large the courgettes are if you want you can crop them and pick them when they're still just very very small and tender or you can let them get a little bit bigger got some nice crops coming here more flowers developing here again the females with a little baby courgette at the base the males just on a yellow flower and a single stem so pick them at the size that you want to eat them keep picking regularly don't turn your back and uh, eat and enjoy courgettes while they're at their very best I've grown quite a few different courgettes over the years including courgette sure thing which is self-fertile or parthenocarpic which means that every female flower should set fruit without the need for pollination from a male flower for this reason sure thing can be a good variety to include in your mix and especially if you only have room for a few plants as fruit formation can be more reliable with most courgettes it's recommended to grow several plants close together to help ensure good pollination and fruit set this is because courgettes produce separate male and female flowers and bees or pollinating insects need to transfer pollen from the male flowers to the female flowers if you grow just a few plants there's a risk that your plants won't produce male and female flowers at the same time so female flowers open but they don't get pollinated and they'll simply rot away while sure thing has many good qualities i don't like to put all my eggs in one basket so to speak so wouldn't just grow this one variety why not well sure thing doesn't have natural disease resistance like some other courgettes and in hot dry weather i've noticed the leaves can start to be infected by powdery mildew disease which looks as if there's a white powder developing on the leaf surface and this eventually kills the leaf and as an organic gardener i don't want to spray my crops with fungicides so this was the main reason i did some research to find a disease resistant courgette one that would stay healthy naturally without the need to spray and i discovered courgette primula so i always grow this one too don't confuse the normal silvered pattern on the leaves of some courgettes with a disease this is quite normal and it's nothing to worry about as an organic gardener i don't want to spray my crops with pesticides or fungicides so i have looked to see if there's any safe or natural ways to control powdery mildew one method i read was about mixing some full fat milk with water and spraying this onto the leaves i think that a fine layer of fat if that's left on the leaf was meant to prevent fungal spores from developing but i didn't find it worked at all at the end of the day just keeping courgettes well watered so they don't get dry at the root is one thing you can do as a gardener to prevent powdery mildew but if you have any other reliable tried and tested methods that you use please add them in the comments below and share them with other viewers and how about other disease resistant varieties of courgette to try fenna is very disease resistant and an f1 hybrid cropping well through summer and into autumn it has extremely high resistance to powdery mildew and something called ZYMV virus, a leaf mosaic virus. 
Fenner produced his good yields from upright plants, making picking easy. Astia has got a ward of garden merit and it also shows good tolerance to powdery mildew. It's a nice compact bush variety with straight uniform fruits and thin skins and being compact makes it a great choice for large pots. If you're one of those people that struggles to pick courgettes without scratching themselves due to those sharp spines that develop along the edges of the leaves and the stems, then you might want to consider growing spineless varieties like Aurelia, which has the extra benefit of forming an abundance of golden fruit. It does show good resistance to powdery mildew until late in the season too. And if you want to grow courgettes on your patio, then look no further than Patio Star. This compact variety is British bred and has smaller leaves than most varieties, making it perfect for a small garden or growing in pots and containers. You could even grow three in a growing bag. And to make handling and picking easier, it has spineless stalks too. I know some people are looking for something different to grow, so here we go. How about Zephyr? This F1 hybrid summer squash is eaten like a courgette and has an unusual two colored skin, which looks like a pale fruit that's been dipped into green paint. Apparently it's bred as a cross between crookneck, delicata and an acorn squash. And it's very tasty. And the young fruits can be sliced up thinly to add a crunch to summer salads. Globe-shaped Ronde de Nice is a French heirloom variety with round fruits that reach the size of a small melon. It's a vigorous bush variety and a generous cropper. It's got a tasty flesh and can even be scooped out and stuffed if you're feeling adventurous in the kitchen. Fruits can be picked and eaten young, like courgettes, but do consider leaving a few to grow larger and reach maturity, letting their skins firm up and harden so they'll store like a squash to use later in the year. And finally, can I give a shout out for Tromboncino? Okay, it's really a climbing squash rather than a bushy courgette, but it's certainly a talking point. This climbing variety will need some support. So put up an arch or cane structure that can clamber up using those tendrils to take hold. You could build something like a wigwam or an A-frame support, the sort of thing you'd use for climbing beans. And it produces these incredibly long fruits, sometimes straight, sometimes curved, really impressive and certain to be a talking point among your friends and neighbors. And they're delicious too. Once it gets established in an open, sunny position, it will flower profusely and the small fruits can be picked and eaten like courgettes or left to grow larger into giant specimens that can be stored for a while and, and used like squash and marrows. I've mentioned that courgettes produce both male and female flowers and you can easily tell them apart. The male flower is where there's a green stalk and a yellow flower at the tip, while the female has a tiny baby courgette sitting just behind the yellow flower. Early in the season, plants sometimes only produce male flowers, so I tend to pick these off to stop the plants wasting energy forming unwanted male flowers when there are no female flowers around for them to pollinate. But as the season develops, you want plants to produce both male and female blooms at the same time, so bees and pollinating insects can transfer pollen from the male flowers to the females to ensure pollination and good fruit set. If female flowers aren't pollinated at all or they're not properly pollinated, then they can start to swell a little bit, but then they'll rot off at the tip and these rotten fruits should be removed and discarded as they'll never develop into healthy courgettes. If your plants are producing good crops, then it's hard keeping up with the harvesting. Turn your back for a few days and those tiny courgettes have swollen into fully fledged marrows. So if you like your courgettes small and tender with a thin skin, then do check plants every day and harvest regularly. If you want bigger courgettes to cook or grate for a particular recipe, then you can leave them to grow a little bit bigger, but don't look away for too long unless you want marrows for stuffing. So there you have it. Start sowing courgette seeds in pots around April time to germinate on a windowsill or in a heated propagator. 
pot the plants up if they need it and plant them outside when all risk of frost has passed in your area, which for me is about the end of May or beginning of June. But you can plant them a little bit later if necessary, once the weather's really warmed up. And do try growing the mildew resistant varieties of courgette like Primula alongside other varieties. Let me know how you get on by writing in the comments section below. Whatever you're up to, happy gardening.